You're watching Tag TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about greening of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Youth from POK attacks innocents on London Bridge, police terms it terror incident. Global leaders call out Pakistan for sponsoring terrorism. Global Terrorism Index 2019 reports South Asia's worsening situation. An Islamic State terror module busted in India. The wrath of radical Islamic terrorism was seen this week on London Bridge, where two people were killed in cold blood in what has been termed as a terror incident by the city police. Usman Khan, a native of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and an ISIS and Al-Qaeda affiliate terrorist, went on to stab people on the London Bridge before he was shot dead by the police in retribution to prevent further damage. Islamic State said the attack was carried out by one of its fighters and was in response to its calls to target countries that have been part of a coalition fighting the jihadist group, a report. Usman Khan, a radicalized youth from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, unveiled a deadly terror plan in London this week. Wearing a fake suicide vest, Khan stabbed two people to death at London Bridge and injured three more before being wrestled to the ground by bystanders in what the authorities called a terrorist attack. Islamic State said that London Bridge attack was carried out by one of its fighters, although no evidence was provided for the same. We now know this attack began inside Fishmongers Hall just before 2 p.m. yesterday. The attacker, whose identity we confirmed last night, stabbed a number of people inside the building and as a result, five people have suffered injuries. Three people, a man and two women, were injured and remain in hospital. Their families have been contacted and specialist officers are supporting them. Tragically, two people, a man and a woman, were killed during the attack. The London Bridge attacker originally belonged to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and lived in there for one term before turning terrorist for the first time. After spending a part of his late teens in POK, he returned to UK, where he started preaching radical Islamism on the internet and attracted a significant following. He had plans of using land owned by his family in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir to build a terror training camp next to an existing mosque in the hope of establishing Sharia law in the region. The youth of Pakistan in the name of religion are misguided by mullahs, by jihadi elements, and they fall prey. They are so, they are so prone to falling prey to these machinations and the cal calculations by jihadis that they are not able to get out. And the sole factor is that they will, you will be blessed by Allah and you will go to heaven. Nine years before executing the deadly London Bridge attack, Usman Khan was once overheard by the British security services discussing how to use an Al-Qaeda manual. It was a snippet of conversation along with other intelligence about a plot to bomb the London Stock Exchange that prompted British police to arrest Khan and a group of older men on December 20, 2010. Later, 28-year-old Khan pleaded guilty in 2012 for preparing acts of terrorism as a member of an Al-Qaeda-inspired terrorist cell. Usman Khan belonged to POK, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. You are aware that it is the policy of the uh, government of India that POK belongs to us. It is integral part of India. And it should come back to us as early as possible. Why these youth fall prey to taking the path of violence is the moot question. And to me it appears that the main reason they fall prey because economically Pakistan, including POK, is in doldrums. Job opportunities are not there. 
POK is headquarter of people like Hafiz Saeed, so Salahuddin. So these people, the environment is such, but an environment is vitiated. Environment is full of jihad. Investigations on the attack reveal Khan's close connection with British Islamist of Pakistani origin Anjim Chaudhry, who was a key figure behind the recruitment of Muslims who were trained at secret locations in Britain during 1990s. The antecedents of Usman Khan cast a harsh and unforgiving spotlight on the global Islamist radicalization project of which Pakistan is an epicenter. His plans to bomb famous public places and replicate a Mumbai-like terror strike on UK Parliament by setting up a terror camp in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir to stage attacks with like-minded individuals should be a matter of concern for the governments in the West. This policy of jihadism which Pakistan uses is in the long run not going to be in the interest of Pakistan. It is going to saw the relationship of Pakistan with Western countries and other countries of the world. Because if the other countries of the world see you as a jihadi state, then your funding pattern, your diplomatic support, your prestige, your standing in the international era, all will suffer. And look at what is happening with Pakistan with regard to FATF, Financial Action Task Force. They have, by Asian group of FATF, they have already been placed in blacklist. It is just a matter of time before the actual organization of FATF puts Pakistan into blacklist. Pakistan has allowed its territory to become a staging point for terrorist activities. Its radicalized views have often been unleashing terror attacks in various parts of the world that pose grave threat to global peace and security, of which several world leaders have shown concern at various bilateral and multilateral meetings. Pakistan's multi-pronged design of backing terror outfits has become a subject of global criticism. Recently, India hosted representatives and leaders from three prominent countries who along with condemning terrorism also specifically called out Pakistan for being a terror hub and asked it to take concrete and irreversible action to contain this menace report. Leaders across borders are busy contemplating about the threat of terrorism which saw its rise from Pakistan and is now expanding its wings from this South Asian nation to countries all across the world. In a recent 2 plus 2 dialogue held between India and Japan, the two countries sent a strong message to Pakistan by asking it to act against terror groups operating out of the territory under its control and comply with the commitments it has made to the Financial Action Task Force. In the joint statement released on Indo-Japan dialogue, the ministers condemned in the strongest terms the growing threat of terrorism and acknowledged that it constituted a major threat to peace and security in the region. They underlined the need for all countries to ensure that all territory under their control is not used to launch terrorist attacks on other countries in any manner. Further, they noted in this context that threat posed to regional security by terrorist networks operating out of Pakistan and called upon it to take resolute and irreversible action against them and fully comply with the international commitments including the FATF. Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh has also on several occasions slammed Pakistan for engaging in notorious cross-border activities, warning it to face consequences of any nefarious action from its side. Pakistan for the last about 15 to 20 years has been using terrorism as a low-cost option for indulging in a proxy war against India. Pakistan feels that risks involved as far as Pakistan is concerned of escalation are very negligible. Dividends that are accruing to him are far lesser than the cost that we are extracting from him. In another major embarrassment to Pakistan, newly elected Sri Lankan President Godabai Rajpaksa's first visit to India also saw mention of terrorism where the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Sri Lanka's Rajpaksa talked about the threat of terrorism in South Asia and condemned the country sponsoring it. 
Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi reiterated India's stand to condemn and fight against terrorism and agreed to strengthen mutual cooperation in dealing with terrorism. Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa appreciated India's cooperation and support to Sri Lanka in fighting the menace of terrorism and acknowledged Sri Lanka's need of reviewing its security strategies. India has always assisted Sri Lanka to enhance our capabilities in intelligence and counter-terrorism and we look forward to continue support in this regard. Recent experience in April this year, we have had to rethink our national security strategies and assistance from India in this regard would be most appreciated. In this regard, His Excellency Prime Minister's assurances are most encouraging. Countries across the globe remain distressed about growing menace of terrorism since all are fearful of the fact that their country could be the next target of radical Islamic terrorist groups. Expressing concern over this threat, visiting Swedish representatives in India held extensive talks with their Indian counterparts. Indian Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar engaged in productive talks on the challenge of terrorism with his Swedish counterpart N. Linde. The two leaders agreed to work together in international forums to address this key challenge of terrorism and emphasize that right to life is the most basic human right. The global leaders are consistently sending a strong message of unity against terrorism, indicating Pakistan to either take action against terrorists or be ready to face the repercussions of breeding terrorists on its soil. The menace of terrorism remains to be the single biggest obstacle in upholding the international peace and security for the entire world. However, the situation in South Asia has worsened steadily as its recent history has been marred by routine terror attacks. Recently, the Sydney-based Institute for Economics and Peace has published the Global Terrorism Index 2019 that states the widespread impact of terrorism in South Asian region, a report. Terrorism in all its forms continues to pose a direct threat to security and prosperity of South Asian countries and its people. Recently, the Sydney-based Institute for Economics and Peace released the Global Terrorism Index 2019 that ranks 163 countries according to the impact of terrorism based on factors such as the number of attacks, fatalities, injuries and the extent of property damage. It reveals that three South Asian countries, India, Pakistan and Afghanistan, are among the top ten countries most affected by violence and are constantly emerging as the hotbed of terror attacks. It's very, very unfortunate that because of one particular country in this region, that is Pakistan, both India and Afghanistan have also become sufferers and victims of terrorism. It is Pakistan, which is the fountainhead of terrorism, which is breeding terrorism, which is financing and training the terrorists, and then sending them across the border, not only to Afghanistan and India, but also to Iran. 
it is pure bad luck of India and Afghanistan that they have such a shameless neighbor like Pakistan. Afghanistan has become the world's deadliest country due to the escalation of war and constant terror attacks. In a recent act of violence, a Japanese doctor, Tetsu Nakamura, who devoted decades of his life in helping people of Afghanistan, was killed along with five others in a gun attack on his vehicle. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe expressed grief over this attack and said that he is shocked to hear about doctor's death. Dr. Nakamura has made many contributions in the field of medicine and irrigation. We know his life-risking efforts in dangerous areas have been appreciated by the people in Afghanistan. It is very shocking to hear that he has passed away in such an incident. I would like to express my deepest condolences. According to this report, Taliban in Afghanistan has become the world's deadliest terror group, which accounted for 38% of all 7,379 deaths in 2018. In Afghanistan, the situation is very bad. It's once again Pakistan-sponsored Taliban and the Akani network, which is creating mayhem in Afghanistan. Apart from destroying the public property, infrastructure, frequent bomb attacks by the Taliban are also claiming precious lives of the Afghans. Afghans are being killed and maimed at will by the Taliban terrorists. The situation in Afghanistan is so bad that people dare not come out of their own houses. India doesn't remain unaffected by the wrath of terrorism. According to Global Terrorism Index, with 350 Indians killed and 540 injured in 748 terrorist incidents, India has been ranked seventh in the countries suffering the most deaths from terrorism in 2018. While the number of terrorist attacks has increased by 14% over the same period, peaking in 2016 at over 900, the attacks are becoming less bloody with a lower fatality rate in 2018. The report states with the presence of Islamist, communist and separatist groups like Hezbollah Mujahideen, all active in the country on Pakistan's finances, India faces a wider threat of terror attacks. Jammu and Kashmir remain the most impacted Indian region by terrorism in 2018, with 321 attacks resulting in 123 deaths, most of which were perpetrated by the Hezbollah Mujahideen, jaish e muhammad and lashkar e taiba These are the Pakistan-sponsored and Pakistan-trained groups which are again creating mayhem in Kashmir. But in Kashmir, the situation is not as bad as it used to be because the Indian security forces have gained control. They have an upper hand now. They have launched successful anti-terror operations. They have not only killed the terrorists, but they have also they have laid their hands on the overground workers and they are trying to finish the terrorists and the terror support network. Also, the action taken by the government of India to put a tap on terror funding and terror financing has impacted the Pakistan-sponsored terrorism in Kashmir to quite a bit. But Pakistan continues to maintain terrorism as an instrument of state policy. According to the report, Pakistan's continued support to terror outfits is leading to its devolution as the country itself is reeling under barbaric terror attacks with 366 terror attacks carried out in 2018. It is the Pakistan army, the Pakistan government, which created these terror groups, which financed them, which trained them, and now they are started treating them as good terrorists and bad terrorists. You cannot have good terrorists and bad terrorists. Terrorists are terrorists. But in Pakistan, those who toe the line of the ISI, those who toe the line of the Pakistan government or the Pakistan army, 
they are being treated well, they are being treated as the state guests and studying the success of the state and the others are being hounded and killed by the Pakistan army and that is why the resentment in Pakistan and Pakistan itself is becoming a victim of such a large number of terror attacks. In today's globalized world, no country is immune to the threat of terror attacks. Attacks on Indian paramilitary, Easter Sunday bombings in Sri Lanka and sustained Taliban offensive in Afghanistan are clear manifestations of this ever-growing scourge and a grim reminder that terrorists are constantly plotting against people, no matter which part of the world they are living in. An Islamic State terror module got busted recently by India's Delhi police as they arrested three suspected terrorists who were planning to carry out a major terror strike in New Delhi and India's Assam State. Incriminating materials are recovered from two hideouts of the module reveal the group's despicable plot against India, a report. In a joint operation with India's Assam State Police, the National Capital's Delhi Police foiled a 2016 Bangladesh restaurant-style terror attack with the arrest of three men from Assam's Golpara district. The trio was inspired by the Islamic State terrorist group. The arrested men were allegedly in touch with three or four other people in India's national capital to carry out terror strikes in New Delhi's crowded markets or restaurants having high footfall. इन्होंने असम के गोलपाड़ा डिस्ट्रिक्ट से एक आईएसआईएस इंस्पायर्ड मॉड्यूल के तीन लड़कों को पकड़ा है, जो कि रासमेला एक वहाँ पे लोकल फेयर होता है कृष्णजी का, कृष्णजी को कमेंट्रेट करते हुए, उस फेयर में प्रेस रन के तौर पे एक आईडी ब्लास्ट करने वाले थे, और उसके सक्सेसफुल हो जाने के बाद में About the recovered incriminating materials, the police informed that a complete IED, two baton swords, four mobile phones containing valuable information on ISIS, about one kilogram of explosive and raw materials for IED bombs were recovered. Delhi police further informed that improvised explosive devices and some literature related to jesh e muhammad have also been recovered from the suspected terrorists. Terrorism in South Asia is a huge issue of concern as all the terrorists from various terror outfits have always identified South Asia as an easy target. The financial and military assistance extended by Pakistan to these terror outfits also contribute to their easy way out in launching terror attacks in South Asia. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Surbhi Sharma signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. watching Tag TV.